Hello, my name is Riza Armbruster. Today I will be discussing somatosensory evoked potential stimulation and its role in intraoperative neurophysiological monitoring. This modality helps assess the integrity of sensory pathways during surgeries that pose a risk to the nervous system. So firstly, SSEPs are electrical responses recorded from the nervous system after a sensory stimulus is applied. These signals help us evaluate the functional integrity of neural pathways, particularly during surgeries involving the spinal cord, brainstem, and peripheral nerves. As we discussed in class, there are five main sensations that our somatosensory pathways can detect. There's proprioception, stereognosis, two-point discrimination, weight discrimination, and vibration. These sensations create SSCPs, and the SSCPs are often monitored using two primary nerves. Um, the median nerve for the upper extremities and the posterior tibial nerve for the lower extremities. And by stimulating these nerves and recording responses at different anatomical locations, we can detect possible nerve damage in real time. So there are many sites from which an SSCP may be stimulated. Um, they are split into the sites for the upper body and sites for the lower body. Sites for the upper body include the median nerve, radial nerve, and ulnar nerve. And the sites for the lower body include the posterior tibial nerve, common peroneal nerve, femoral nerve, saphenous nerve, and pudendal nerve. And all of these nerves cover certain sections of the spinal cord, which is what you see in parentheses. So the median nerve covers most of the upper body from C5 to T1, whereas the pudendal nerve covers a small portion of the lower body from S2 to S4. And these are some stimulation parameters for SSAPs. Um, the first one is a gain of one to five microvolts. Um, we have a low frequency filter of 30 Hertz, which helps filter out the lower frequency noise like artifacts. Um, we have a high frequency filter setting of 500 Hertz for cortical measurements and 1500 Hertz for subcortical and peripheral measurements. And then next, the stimulation duration lasts um, about 300 microseconds, and its rate is around 2.6 to 4.8 times per second. And lastly, the sweep parameters for the upper body is around 50 milliseconds and 100 milliseconds for the lower body. So first, let's discuss the median nerve stimulation pathway. Um, this is typically the most common stimulation site when we want to record the upper extremities of the body. The stimulation site for the median nerve is located at the wrist, where the red X is. Um, a cathode and anode are placed two to three centimeters apart, and then they are stimulated. So firstly, um, the stimulus is applied at the wrist, activating the first order neuron, which carries the signal up the arm and into the spinal cord. Um, secondly, it ascends ipsilaterally via the fasciculus cuneatus in the dorsal column and synapses in the nucleus cuneatus at the medulla. And from there, the second order neuron crosses over and ascends through the medial lemniscus to reach the thalamus. And finally, the third order neuron transmits the signal from the thalamus to the primary somatosensory cortex in the parietal lobe, where the brain processes the sensory information. Um, this pathway is crucial for detecting sensory disturbances and ensuring the nervous system functions properly during surgery. So for upper extremity SSCPs, um, the key peaks or obligate peaks that we see at certain parts of the body include um, Herb's point, which reflects uh, brachial plexus activity, N13, which represents the dorsal column and fasciculus cuneatus, P14, which originates from the caudal medial lemniscus, um, N18, which is related to the brainstem and thalamic processing, and N20, which represents cortical activity in the primary somatosensory cortex. Any delays or absence of these peaks could indicate neural damage, which is important information to recognize during surgery so that we can let the surgeon know. Now let's look at the posterior tibial nerve, which is responsible for transmitting sensory information from the lower extremities. The stimulation site for the posterior tibial nerve is located near the ankle and the Achilles tendon. The anode is placed three centimeters distal to the cathode and stimulation occurs. So firstly, stimulation occurs at the ankle, activating the first order neuron, which carries the signal to the spinal cord. 
Um, it ascends ipsilaterally via the fasciculus gracilis in the dorsal column and synapses in the nucleus gracilis at the medulla. The second order neuron then crosses over and travels through the medial lemniscus to reach the thalamus. Finally, the third order neuron transmits the signal from the thalamus to the primary somatosensory cortex, completing the sensory pathway. Um, this pathway is important for detecting sensory function in lower limb surgeries, um, such as spinal cord procedures. And just like we talked about um, the upper extremity SSCPs, obligate peaks, we also um, find specific obligate peaks for the lower body, including the popliteal fossa, which is the depression behind the knee, um, LP, which is the dorsal column and fasciculus gracilis, P31, which is the caudal medial lemniscus, N34, which is the brain stem and thalamus, and P37, which is the primary somatosensory cortex. So in summary, through SSCPs, recordings are able to take place all along the patient's body to determine the integrity of each step of the DCML pathway. Um, inconsistencies in the obligate peaks may indicate some abnormality in somatosensation. And then because of SSCPs, the IONM professional is able to determine how functional each step of the pathway is and alert the surgeon if need be in order to maximize patient protection. And these are my references. And thank you for listening.